Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about Microsoft Fabric licensing. One of the most common questions, how much Microsoft Fabric does it cost for me? How does it work with Power BI licensing? Uh, can I have inst one instead of the other one? Uh, what are different SKUs and pricing models? Uh, let's jump into the topic and talk about all of these. Um, so to start understanding Microsoft Fabric licensing, I'll go into very quick into into what Microsoft Fabric is. If you are into uh, if you are new to Microsoft Fabric, this is an end-to-end -end data analytics solution um, offered by Microsoft. It's a software as a service. It has different um, workloads: one workload for the storage, another for data integration, data warehousing data engineering, business intelligence, which is Power BI, data science, all together, this is a platform that gives you everything you need in a data analytics project. Uh, and you can enable it uh, in your organization. Um, as of now is a public preview, but you can enable it so that you can uh, go and use it. I have different videos about explaining what Microsoft Fabric is in a little bit more detail and how you can enable it and even some of the objects of it such as warehouse, lake house and things like that. So go and check out those other videos. So in this video we are focusing on the licensing. To understand licensing first you need to understand the capacity structure. So uh, we have three main, um, let's say, capacity structures you have to understand. The first one is a tenant an organization or a domain usually has a tenant. It can have multiple tenants as well. Like for example, here you can see retail company A has one tenant for the whole entire organization, which is quite usual scenario. But it is possible that if the company is big, retail company B has multiple tenants, one tenant for let's say marketing and sales, another for finance tenant, or you can even have tenants based on the region based. Then under the tenant, we have capacity. A capacity is a set of resources, which I'll explain a little bit later. You can have multiple capacities under a tenant. Like here, you see we have three capacities, sales, marketing, finance, or you can have one capacity. Uh, then under each capacity, you can have multiple workspaces. A workspace is like a sharing unit. This is where you have your Microsoft Fabric objects. These objects can be lake house, warehouse, data pipeline, uh, data flow, even Power BI objects, data sets, reports. Um, you can have these in different workspaces, like the way that you work with Microsoft um, Power, BI, Power BI capacities. This is also the same way that you work with capacities in um, in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, so what is a capacity? Capacity is a um, set of resources. These are provided to you um, uh, as a dedicated resource, so you can go and use these dedicated resources. Um, and, um, and there are different level of these resources, like if you want more CPUs or if you want less uh, CPU power to understand and measure these, Microsoft came up with the term CU, which is capacity capacity unit. This term is to there to help you to understand um, like how fast is or, or how powerful is one capacity versus the other one. What is the CU of this capacity versus the other capacity? So in short, a capacity is a dedicated uh, pool of resources that you can assign for a fabric work that you intend to. Uh, now the pricing part, uh, which is the important part. So how is the pricing and SKU? So um, SKUs right now for Fabric are all F category, F2, F8, F4, F2048, uh, uh, all of these. But there will be another SKU coming later, um, like in a few months called RI, which is with a minimum term. These F SKUs, however, doesn't have any term. You can turn it on any time you want, you can pause it, you can restart it any time you want. So it's quite easy to work with. The minimum is F2 with two capacity units. Remember that CU is um, used to understand how powerful is one versus the other one. For example, F4 is twice as powerful as F2 or it's half of power of F8. That is how you understand it. 
uh, and uh, and you can see the pricing. These are US dollars uh, hourly or monthly based. So for example, F2, F2 in an hour only cost you 36 cents uh, in a month, something around $263 in a month and because they don't have any minimum term that is why their pricing is like that uh, you can get a cheaper pricing when the ri becomes available because they have like a yearly uh, minimum limit and if you see here um, some of these are equivalent to power bi licenses like f8 is equivalent to uh, embedded a1 or f16 embedded a2 f32 embedded a3 <clears throat> and then premium one is equivalent to f64 uh, another important thing here is that you will need power bi um, uh, you, you will be able to share freely Power BI content in F64 and after. Before that, you would need individual licensing as well. So I'll explain about this a little bit more when we get to different scenarios. So for now, this is like how the SKUs and pricing works. Now, another thing is that storage is not considered in that cost. So if you want um, um, to, cons uh, to ca calculate the overall cost you always have to consider storage. Storage is using one lake of course but one lake behind the scene is using Azure Data Lake storage. Azure Data Lake storage uh, is per um, consumption based so if you use like let's say one gigabyte it's uh, 0 0.023 so even less than um, three cents uh, per month for one gigabyte. And that is US West two region. Different regions might have different costs. If you want to transfer the data between uh, different regions, you might have extra charts of transfer. Uh, but the storage is not usually a big part of this, um, this expense. The majority part of the expense is the compute power that you are using. The storage is usually the minor part of it. Um, another thing to understand in addition to capacity is that we have also user-based licensing. User-based licensing is familiar for those of you coming from Power BI world. We have free user, we have pro user, we have premium per user. In Power BI there are different abilities that each of these provide. Free users can use the content um, but cannot share. Pro can use and share the content and create the content. Premium per user or PPU can also use some of the premium functionalities such as um, computed the entity in Dataflow or some of the AI capabilities inside Dataflow and, and so on. Um, the larger size data set and things like that. In terms of Microsoft Fabric, um, there might not be much difference between these if you are not using the Pro, uh, if you are not using the Power BI content piece of it, the free itself might be enough. But different scenarios has different situations, so I'm going to talk about those a little bit later. The majority part of the licensing in Microsoft Fabric is capacity-based rather than user-based. Um, Okay, how would you know that how powerful is F2? I would say the best way to understand it is to go and try it yourself. Spin up an F2 capacity, work with it, see how it works. Um, you would be amazed actually with how much power that F2 would give you, how performant this is going to be. And, and if your whole experience takes, let's say, three hours, you just spend like $1 for this whole experience uh, because it's 36 um, 36 cents per hour and the storage is just like very minimum uh, and if you are first time signing up for Microsoft Azure you always get a $200 credit which you can use part of that to, to do this experiment so I would encourage you to do that to start this you go to Azure portal to portal.azure.com search for Microsoft Fabric resource once you find it click on it and uh, then you would have the option to create a fabric capacity. When you create the fabric capacity, you set up the name and some specification, what the region, things like that. But one of the other things around it is to choose the SKU. And that is the sizes that I explained earlier, F2, F8, F512 uh, and things like that. And you can select it and then start doing the work. 
Now, uh, a misconception in this licensing plan is that uh, something that because like the minimum level F2 is there and because it's the dedicated capacity in Power BI, we used to be able to use a dedicated capacity, say P1, for example, and share the content of that, share the Power BI content with free users using Power BI apps. So a misconception might be that I can use F2, which is a dedicated capacity, but much smaller cost. It's like $263 a month with free users using Power BI apps. No, you cannot do that. So if you want to have that ability of sharing Power BI contents for free, you have to be minimum F64. And F64 is basically uh, P1. Right, so F64 or higher SKUs, you can share the Power BI content for free. F64 or before, you need individual Power BI licenses that supports sharing such as Pro or PPU, right? This is an important thing to consider. Um, so you cannot have F2 instead of um, P1 or you cannot have F2 instead of PPU. However, you can build some scenarios that works together. I'm going to talk about that um, in a couple of slides later. Uh, if you are just using Power BI, uh, how does this mean in terms of licensing for you? No change. If you are using Power BI, you will still have capacity-based licensing in Power BI, embedded uh, and premium, EMSKUs, ASKUs, PSKUs, they are all there. Um, your user-based licensing, free, pro and premium per user licensing, they are all there. You would be able to use Power BI as you are using it today. There won't be any changes at all in that. And I have a separate video talking about Power BI licensing, exact details of that, how this would work for small businesses, for big organizations, uh, how embedded would come into that uh, pricing model. Uh, go and check out that. There won't be any changes in the Power BI licensing. So if you are worried that how the Microsoft Fabric is affecting that, no, there, there is no change on that. However, there might be scenarios that you might even save slightly more with switching to some of power to fabric licensing. I'll explain about that in, in a scenario. Um, so one of the really interesting scenarios uh, in fabric is uh, if you use one of the low FSKUs uh, with a pro Power BI account. Power, pro Power BI account gives you ability to share the content, of course, right? And uh, a low FSKUs will give you ability to use all of the mm, all of the Microsoft Fabric objects. You can create a data warehouse, you can create a data pipeline, lake house, you can use the data science workload, uh, you can have Power BI with direct lake to, um, to these resources. All of these would be, able, uh, would be available for you in a low FK, F, SKU such as F2. Now, F2 isn't really costing that much, or F4 or F8, depending on which one you want to use. And if you combine that with Pro, then you have Power BI sharing and Fabric together. Uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, we are designing a solution for an organization with 50 users. And we want to use some of the premium functionalities in Power BI, such as computed entity, we want to use um, data mart, we want to have uh, functionalities uh, that are premium, but on the other hand side, if you go and purchase a premium capacity, it is going to cost $5,000 a month. So cheapest option for that would be uh, PPU account per user, which is $20 per user. For 50 users, it's $1,000 monthly. Now with um, Fabric, I can spin up an F2. I mean, it would always depend on how much uh, data I have, how much compute power that I have, but let's assume that F2 would work. Uh, F2 costs $263 a month, and then my 50 users don't need to be PPU anymore. They can be just pro users. If they are pro users, then I have to pay only $10 per user, so, uh, so that would be $500 plus F2 $263, plus possible storage cost, which would be really minor. So it would be definitely less than $800 monthly. So this is a scenario that uh, using low F SKUs with Power BI Pro ended up to be a much better option for me. It's good for uh, small to medium scale business sizes. 
Another uh, golden scenario here is that Power BI Premium with benefits. Why I call it Power BI Premium with benefits? Uh, those of you who are now with Power BI Premium uh, licensing, P1, P2, or any of uh, higher licensing like that. So at the moment, you can use these licenses and capacities to do everything you want in Power BI. That's obvious. But now with Microsoft Fabric, Microsoft is enabling Fabric inside your tenant using your P1, P2, all of your premium capacity based licensing. So your premium capacity is going to be Fabric enabled. This means that uh, your P1 would be like F64, not that you are going to pay that much, but it's going to be uh, like F64 in terms of the capacity unit. So now you can, in addition to creating all those Power BI objects, you can also go and create Microsoft Fabric objects, like Hux, Data Warehouse, Data Pipelines, all of those objects uh, as additional. That is why I call it Power BI Premium with benefits. So you have all of those Power BI Premium features, but now you get a whole set of extra benefits that Fabric enables you to do without paying anything more than what you are paying right now. That is a big win for larger organization. Uh, one last thing to remember is that FSKUs are um, for situations that you want to pause the service, you want to restart it, you don't have any minimum term for the contract. Um, there is a yearly uh, version of this coming as well in a few months, would be called RISKUs. RISKUs would be definitely much cheaper because you have the minimum yearly term. So uh, these few months is a good time to go and try those FSKUs. If you find them useful, then you can, like when RI becomes available, go and switch to our eyes. Uh, so in short, this is um, what the Microsoft Power BI um, Fabric licensing combined with Power BI would look like. It's a little bit confusing when you combine it with Power BI how it works, but in general it is simple to understand. I uh, recommend go, you go and try it yourself and see how it works. An F2 would surprise you with the performance you would get. Uh, and remember those situations of using low FSKUs with Power BI Pro license or Power BI Premium with all these new fabric features, which is going to be fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and sub subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on the subject of Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.